Rick Thomas <clears throat> is going to read a sonnet by Sri Aurobindo, Surrender. And Rick, if you're inspired, I would love it if you read it twice, but only if you're inspired. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you, Matteo. Can everyone hear me okay? <clears throat> Surrender by Sri Aurobindo. O thou of whom I am the instrument, O secret spirit and nature housed in me, let all my mortal being now be blent in thy still glory of divinity. I have given my mind to be dug thy channel mind. I have offered up my will to be thy will. Let nothing of myself be left behind in our union, mystic and unutterable. My heart shall throb with the world beats of thy love. My body become thy engine for earth's use. In my nerves and veins, thy rapture's streams shall move. My thoughts shall be hounds of light for thy power to loose. Keep only my soul to adore eternally and meet thee in each form and soul of thee. One more time. O oh, thou of whom I am the instrument, O oh, secret spirit and nature housed in me, let all my mortal being now be blent in thy still glory of divinity. I have given my mind to be dug, thy channel mind. I have offered up my will to be thy will. Let nothing of myself be left behind in our union, mystic and unutterable. My heart shall throb with the world beats of thy love. My body become thy engine for earth use. In my nerves and veins, thy rapture's streams shall move. My thoughts shall be hounds of light for thy power to loose. Keep only my soul to adore eternally and meet thee in each form and soul of thee.
Thank you, Rick. That was lovely. <clears throat> For the next 20 minutes now, Susan and Rick will talk a bit about their Thursday night foundations and practice group. And more specifically about creating the receptive space to experience unity. I think many of you may be experiencing <clears throat> that we have succeeded in creating a very receptive field among us already. And Rick and I don't want to draw you up out of that, um, although we're going to be sharing with you a number of practical details and um, specifics. What we'd like to invite you to do as we begin our, our sharing is to focus as deeply as you can in your heart, in your soul, in the psychic being, and be as, as vigilant to be in the moment as possible to be aware of what in an ongoing way is arising up in you and perhaps descending down to you. And that will then be hopefully the basis for your sharing when we get into the small groups. <clears throat> and I'll remind you again, um, I have it right here, what our prompt is. The presence of the mother's force in the psychic being can open and radiate in each one of us to create a field of harmony, nurturing a collective yoga. How do you relate to this opportunity? And before I say anything more, I want to acknowledge what a, a superb talk Sri gave about circle work. I think she, she has conveyed to us all the dimensions of its possibility. And as our group has developed, we've come to um, rest in circle work and it's made a tremendous difference in what we've been able to share with each other and the progress we've been able to make in our sadhana. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how our group began and some of the things that are, are important about it will be um, addressed by Rick. Then I'll tell you what it's like to facilitate a group like this. And then we're going to talk about the, the essential things we feel has come out of it for the members and for ourselves. Um, Rick and I are trying to do this spontaneously. We're going to go back and forth. We did not write out a, a specific script because we wanted to be able to seize where we were in the moment. So we may, we may skitter around a little bit, but I hope you'll bear with us. We're trying to um, be very spontaneous in what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> so just as COVID was, was happening, and everything was being shut down. The Boston uh, Sri Aurobindo Center, which had been run by Mickey Finn's wife, Angel, um, shifted. Angel decided to retire. And she turned the, turned the center over to Madhavi Ravalo. And when that happened, a few of us got together and we decided we would we would look for ways to offer what we what, what felt important to us through the center and into that discussion stepped our dear friend Karun Das and he had an inspiration and an aspiration and it was in the form of offering a foundations and practice group and we put out the call to see if anyone was interested. And we received um, a number of inquiries, but eight people decided to join us, including six people joined us, including 
um, Karan Das and I. And we began. We did not start with circle work. We did not know about circle work. We started with a format that was very much like what we do in the plenary session when we have an experience and then ask for comments and reflections. And that's what we did. We brought together a lot of materials, um, reading materials that describe the basis of, of the yoga, the, the fundamental principles. And one of those was collectivity, but it wasn't our focus. Um, the thing that was important and relates very much to what Sri was sharing with us was the part that was devoted to personal inquiry and support for sadhana. And that's what, we, that's what we intended to do. We wanted to involve people as much as possible with what the materials and the principles meant to them individually and if they experienced them in their own lives and their own sadhana. The group has, has people who have been in the yoga for many, many years, 40 years, 30 years, and some people who have been with a number of different teachers who were familiar with Sri Aurobindo and the mother up to a certain point, but did not know the full extent of the transformative aspect of, of the yoga. So we were very blessed to have some diversity, which has um, added a great deal to the way we've, we've received each other and shared. So that being said, um, I'd like to um, call Rick in to take the next part of it um, and talk, tell you more about our structure and procedure. Thank you, Susan. And thank you for thanking Sri for that wonderful um, sharing that she gave and explained the foundations and understanding of circle group. Um, so what I wanted to uh, just give you a picture of in describing our group and how it unfolded is that some of the structure and um, <clears throat> it began um, with two facilitators and they happened to be male and female. And um, eventually um, Karandas, who was the other facilitator with Susan, stepped down and I was asked to step in, uh, which I uh, gratefully accepted and was humbled by. Um, the group uh, met and, and made a commitment to meet uh, weekly, and we have been doing so for a little over two years now, with all of the same people, pretty much, with the exception of maybe one person ever dropping out. Um, the meeting uh, uh, lasted for one and a half hours or a little more. Um, depending on a little bit that people might want to share more. It took place on Zoom, which was a big surprise to us that it could be as effective as it actually became. Meditation was there from the beginning. Um, we offered reading material from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the mother and from their disciples. Um, most of which of the disciple writing had oh, many quotes from Sri Aurobindo and the mother. Aside from the written uh, material and reading, um, Susan and I would meet on a weekly basis and decide on, after judging and assessing and discerning where the group was um, and what the reading material might be, we decided that we would write one or the two of us one or the other would write a prompt and pretty much we alternated week to week susan would write a prompt and then i would write a prompt and and this was uh used to um, inspire the group as to how they could share from their personal inquiry um, at a given moment um, in relationship to the readings what they were getting personally from having read and contemplated the readings that we were offering. Um, as the group morphed um, and we experienced some of the difficulties and normal tensions in a group, 
and introduced um, circle work after our, our collaborating with each other and with Matteo, uh, who also collaborated with other people, I understand. Um, we introduced the concepts of the circle work as a structure to hone in people's egos and to help them find center. Um, as this took place, we worked with promoting um, and honoring the diversity was there. Um, why this and why a lack of orthodoxy that we were continuing to emphasize is because for one thing, Sri Aurobindo always uh, and the mother always said that there would be no more religion. That it's time for the end of religion. So what we need are individuals to develop a relationship to their souls, to, to unfold that energy individually through the diversity so that the, there would be a greater flexibility and capacity of the human being. Um, part of that is to develop and widen the mind. So you have to then listen to other people. And if you can listen to other people, that means maybe you can possibly see a side that you're not seeing. The tendency would be that, oh, I know this and I want to teach person this. But if you just sit there and really open your heart and listen, um, somehow a flexibility develops into the mind and it's more apt to be able to receive what comes from the, the soul, the psychic being. Um, part of the process when we had certain readings is that people could choose in their readings as they shared to choose a passage and to read aloud for others to hear and for that energy of the passage to radiate into the group. We also opened it up, breaking down a hierarchical structure and would ask people in the group if there was something that they wanted to contribute for the next week's group. So that the process and the material that we studied also widened. And <clears throat> we laid an importance on breathing as it is taught in, a, in, in meditation, it, breathing is a force and it connects directly to our body and to our emotions and to our mind. And if we use a little bit of willpower to remember to breathe, it then has the capacity to help us refocus. And so we use it to refocus and step away from the busyness of the outer being to then rest in the presence of the divine so that it can radiate and fill through the silence a listening outer being. We ask people to try not to teach because what we want to really hear is how each person is managing their sadhana and see if we can learn from them. See if it can expand us. See if it can develop a new connection that was limited by our own uh, possibly rigid thinking or closed feelings or fears. We didn't promote dialogue unless someone asked for feedback, but that would come in the same order of the circle that we had created for the first round because we might have several rounds. So we wouldn't be interrupting people. And that's basically how our circle group ran and how it grew. And I'm going to turn it back over to Susan, who will now speak about some of the responsibilities of us as facilitators. Thanks, Rick. Um... So basically, the facilitator is the mother. 
and we're we're instruments of that. And that's been very, very, um, very true because as a person who's been responsible in in each weekly um, gathering, um, I experience it pretty effortlessly. We've we've discussed, we've shared, we've listened, and whatever is next appears in in the most wonderful way. Um, we invoke the mother, and we try to open to her her response to the situation that's unfolding. But we found that she comes and she's there and the next thing appears and we carry it out and the next thing arises. So it's been effortless. And as Rick says, we're not in the teaching mode. We're, in the, we're, we're organizing, we're helping the structure. We're presenting materials that have come to us from the mother or from other group members who are listening and the mother has spoken through them. And, and then we, we execute it, we send it out and share it. And then we talk after the group a little bit to see what's arisen and if we need to pay any attention to it. Sometimes there's things we need to respond to outside of the group, but basically we, we try to see where we've gotten to at that point. We spend the weekend maybe contemplating reading ourselves. We meet again in the first part of the week and then whatever needs to be there is usually there. We write it up and we send it out. Um, one of the blessings of being a facilitator is the work, the sadhana that Rick and I get to do with one another because it's led to a lot of very deep sharing and a lot of um, collaboration. Um, let me see. I think that's about what I want to say about facilitation. Um, can I add one well, one thing, Susan? I was going to let me one more thing. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I wanted to say something about um, in, in our process the the role of the grace because I keep hearing myself mentioning it, <laughs> and and um, I think all of you who have done the integral yoga practice know that it's an impossibility without the mother's grace. And so one of the things that we did quite early on was to try to um, pro provide materials that would help us make the relationship with the mother very real and tangible to people. So we, we worked with her, her photographs. We talked a lot about her experience with Mona Sarkar and, um, and we've, I think, succeeded in making calling on the mother a very tangible reality for everyone. Okay, Rick, so go ahead. Just a, a very short thing. Um, when Susan says that things were made easy, um, there are different ways that things came to us. And we were very surprised. Uh, very often, Susan might sit down and say, well, Rick, uh, what are we going to talk about? And I would say, you know, I really have no idea. My head is like empty. I, I can't even think for some reason. I feel like something is pressuring my head, but I can't think. And then she so, might mention, well, she had this experience or something she came across. And then all of a sudden, I'd open up and I'd start talking about that, that thing and something just flowed through me. Sometimes I might have a dream the night before, and it's exactly what um, Susan was thinking the next day. Sometimes I might open my Facebook page and something hits me, and it's exactly what seemed to be the thing that the, the group needed to work on that, that week. And so these things were coming from everywhere. Our sadhana was calling on the mother, and we were centering ourselves. And she was just handing things to us in our silence. So I just wanted to leave it there. Okay, Susan. Okay, so um, in essence, in, in the sadhana itself, what we're really working to do is to shift our identity from the ego to the true identity of the psychic being. And so, 
a lot of what we've talked about is steps of purification. And that's where we get into the nitty gritty of things that can come up um, that interfere with the process. What is wonderful in this group is that people have been recognizing and sharing about their difficulties and they haven't been acted out in the group. It's been safe enough to take the risk to share what, what is the struggle. And, and in the sharing, of course, there's a, there's a purification and a release and a teaching for other people who are working with the same thing. So that's been, that's been a wonderful, wonderful um, aspect of the sadhana part of what we've been doing. And I think, Rick, we, we would both agree that not only has our own sadhana developed, but we feel that there's been a lot of progress in all the members. Um, I'm aware of the time. I'm not so sure there's that much more we need to say, Rick. What do you think? Not much more. I, I would just add this one little thing in, from Sri Aurobindo. Um, the first essential sign of the subjective age must be the growth of the subjective idea of life, the idea of the soul, the inner being, its powers, its possibility, its growth, its expression, and the creation of a true, beautiful, and helpful environment for it as the one thing of first and last importance. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Rick. And I'll read the I'll read the prompt one more time. That will be what you will be doing in your breakout groups. The presence of the mother's force in the psychic being can open and radiate in each one of us to create a field of harmony, nurturing a collective yoga. How do you relate to this opportunity? Thank you.